Numerical Computation, Chapter 5, Video Number 1. The topic of this chapter is numerical solutions for nonlinear equations. In this video, we'll give a brief introduction. So the problem setting is the following. We are given a function f of x. It's a continuous function and real valued and possibly nonlinear. Because we know if fx shall be a linear function, then finding the root is trivial. So we want to find the root for this function such that at the root r, the function admits 0 as its value. So this is the same as solving the equation f of x equals to 0, where the f is a nonlinear function. Before we get into any algorithms, let's take a look at some simple examples just to warm up. So first example, let's take a familiar quadratic polynomial as our um, function. So let's say is x squared plus 5x plus 6. So we all know how to factorize a quadratic polynomial, and I hope we do. And this will give you x plus 2 times x plus 3. And finding 0 is easy, so it's either the first term is 0 or the second term is 0. So here we find actually two roots. One is negative 2, the other is negative 3. So this example shows to us that for a nonlinear function, the roots are not unique. There can be multiple of them. Second example, still a quadratic polynomial. Let's see, I have x squared plus 4x plus 10. And you see you can um, make the first two terms a perfect square by adding a constant 4. This gives me x plus 2, the whole thing square, plus what remains is a 6. So this function here is always bigger than or equal to 6, so it will have no roots. So this example shows the case that nonlinear functions might not have any roots. And last one, this is a silly example. So I'm just writing a horrible nonlinear function, throwing any random terms, and I want you to find its roots. So the point I want to make is that this is not so easy, isn't it? Think of any function, nonlinear, taking some expression. There might not be an exact expression for the root. So the conclusion here will be roots can be difficult or maybe even impossible to find analytically. So if that shall be the case in general, then having a numerical algorithm that will generate an approximate solution would be very useful. So in this chapter, um, we will learn quite a few methods. We'll start with bisection, and then we move on to fixed-point iteration, which is a, a very um, useful um, method, even in many other um, connections of mathematic topics. And then the famous Newton's method, and also the secant method. So let's get started.